we just had enough technology to sequence one human genome. And that one human genome was just an exciting, amazing trip of mapping this blueprint for a human. Looking back on it is that we only thought about one when these days we think about millions. We're able to sequence the entire human genome, all of the genes in a couple of days at a very minimal cost. Thus we're able to provide to individuals very accurate information about diagnosis. To understand both the common causes of breast cancer and the rare causes, we need to generate large data sets with many, many individuals affected with breast cancer. Literally tens or hundreds of millions of people. And how are we going to do that? We're going to responsibly share data between researchers in different countries. These large amounts of data are spread out across the world, across different centers, even across the street. And you can't change architecture of or existing machines to, to, to do new things. What you can do is you could have a standard that allows these two disparate machines to talk to each other. We have to have standards for how we structure that data, both the clinical information and the genetic information. So that when it comes to a particular variant in a single person, we can accurately predict for that person what to expect because of that genetic change. So we can quickly identify whether that variant has ever been seen before in the population, and if so, how common it is. We can start to work out that this drug might work for these people but this other drug won't work for them. Fully realising the benefits of precision medicine will mean uh, coming up with ways of aggregating, uh, harmonising and federating each of those different databases. In the future, the way I would love to see genomic medicine happening is that when each patient gets tested and we generate a genomic data set on that patient, that we're not looking at that individual's data set in isolation and we're actually comparing it to the world's population of patients. To get to this future we will need to have federated data sets, an ecosystem of interoperable standards. The Global Alliance for Genomics and Health is setting the standards for the safe and responsible sharing of genomic and clinical data internationally. Each of these standards does a job by itself but by coordinating the way that we develop these standards they click together to solve much bigger problems than each one can do on its own. But the Global Alliance doesn't just address technical issues, it also looks at policy issues. How can we uh, responsibly and ethically share data internationally? Researchers will want to use this data and you have to make sure that it respects consent and privacy, that's the first issue. And the second, how do you make sure that that researcher is really that person? So that we know that the right people are accessing the data when they're allowed to. That's what's unique about the Global Alliance. It's using, for the first time in human history, a human right as a basis for an international collaboration in data sharing. It's not abstract tools, it's not abstract standards. We are talking about patients, and we're talking about the direct impact on, on somebody's health. And that's what I love about it. All of us need these standards to be able to learn from the information that we're generating every day. The sharing of genomic and clinical data is going to greatly enhance clinical care. We're going to be able to provide better diagnosis and more targeted treatments for an individual.